play that for somebody special this morning. We had prayer before the service ever started, didn't we, Miss Diane? Yes. We did. 2020. It's here. I don't know if you expected it to be here, but it is here. And you can see the the verse, the letters in red is gone. This is going to be our theme for 2020. My life verse, OAC 2020. The reason you see that picture is because there's going to be a banner that looks like that right there next week. But we're going to start this, and you're going to ask me, I hope, why, where did this come from? Well, Mike and George were the inspiration for this for 2020. Whenever the other day, and it's a good thing, Mike, it's not always good when I say your name out loud, but it's And I appreciate you. When George got up here and when he shares his scripture for karate, it means something to him. When we first took karate together, I, I started with him. And we'd have to memorize scriptures, and there's always a, a testing scripture. And then there's one that's supposed to be personal to you. And I can remember those early days whenever I'd help him. He'd say, Dad, help me find a scripture. Jesus Webb, go with that one. You can memorize that one. It's pretty good. Jesus Webb. But I remember he can memorize. That wasn't a problem. He'd always ask me, well, what does that mean to me? And I would try to be the good fatherly pastoral person and say, well, you need to find out what it means to you. After looking at me for a few minutes, he goes, no, just tell me what it means to me. And we would work on that, but he's grown way past that. And about three weeks ago, when he got up here and talked about passing and getting his black belt, he said his, his scripture, 2 Timothy 1.7, for the Spirit of God uh, get, God gave us does not make us timid, but gives power, love, and self-discipline. And that is what he lives by. And Mike leaned over and said, I think that's his life verse. And I started thinking about it. You know, along with the, babe, the words that come out of the mouth of babes, a lot of times comes conviction. Now, I can tell you that I've had life verses. Some people will say, well, I've had the same life verse all my life. Okay, I'm good with that. Some people will tell you, especially new believers, my life verse is John 3, 16. Good place to start. It's a good place to start. But I want to challenge you for 2020. And you don't have to have, there's no, this is not an assignment. A lot of times we want assignments. When's it, my students at school, Miss Player, as soon as you say this is what we're going to be doing, when's it due? Well, I, I just really want you to learn. What, is it homework? Um, will it be graded? How many? I mean, all this stuff. When I just trying to get you to learn from this. So throughout the year, I don't care if next July, not July, December 30 or 31st, you find your life first. I want it to be a process that not only guides us as an individual person, but as a church. I want a church verse. I want it to speak boldly about us. And, and I wish I could tell you, uh, like some of these guys that you'll see on TV, I wish I had it all for 2020. I don't. Many of you thought maybe that you're going to hear me say 2020, the year of clear vision, 2020. You're going to hear that in a lot of churches. A lot. I wish I could stand before you and tell you that we're moving on this day. Don't know that. When it comes to moving, it's not always on our time, is it, Eddie? <laughs> I'll say. I'll say. People have asked me, and I, I can remember, I remember when we first started back in the day, I mean, I, I have, I had to line out things that we're going to do for the year. Listen. Linda. God's people spent a lot of time arguing out in the desert about what are we going to do tomorrow when he's providing for them that day. The reason why we sing that song, this is the day. Listen, that's our purpose this day. What about tomorrow? This day. No man knoweth the hour, but we do know this day. Why? Because our eyes have been opened to this day. We took a breath this day. And so we're going to focus on our life first day by day. And when you do come to that moment where you get your life first, you may already have it, but I hope you're learning along the way because I'm going to teach you the process today. If you do, and when you do, you're going to give it to us, and we're going to put it, and we're going to post it up. 
I want everybody to know everybody's life first. I want to know what's important to Isabella. I want to know what's important to Michael Wayne, Murray Dobbs, Roger St. Pierre Jr. I want to know those things. Why? Because if I know what's your life first, it may empower me and challenge me. So, Psalm 119 11 will be our focus today. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Psalm 119 11. If you're with us online watching, you're going to be working on how to get your life first for 2020. It says in the Word of God, 119 and verse 11, this is the New American Standard. I just like this version a little bit better on this, this scripture. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. From the earliest time that you're in Sunday school, we teach you, where does it? He hides it in my heart. Listen, you do realize that once you become a believer in Jesus Christ, Robert's probably our newest guy here, but once you become a believer and you receive Jesus Christ, you receive all of it. Every part, piece, every word he ever spoke, ever taught, the whole unction and, and guidance of the Holy Spirit. The rest is on you. What am I going to do about that? How many of you ever had encyclopedias growing up? We did. Don't try to sell those. Nobody's buying them. We tried that. <laughs> She's been trying for years to sell them. I can remember that when you walked into our living room, there was the encyclopedias. And listen, we had answers to every question. Nowadays, it's right on your phone. Google, what is? Alexa, what is? But I can remember none of just owning the encyclopedias didn't make me smarter. Unless I opened them. Carrying books around don't make you smarter. Sitting in church doesn't make you more religious or righteous. Hearing the pastor preach to you doesn't make you deeper in the word of God unless you open the word of God. Your word I have treasured in my heart that I might not sin against you. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to be living, says, it, question and answer for 2020. So there are some questions and I'm going to provide you the answer. And it's all right there in chapter 119 of the Psalms. Verse 9 says this. How can a young man keep his way pure? Question. Answer. By living according to your word. We, we, we get all caught up on how, what am I supposed to do, Pastor? What, what, how, how do I act more like this? It says, how can a young man keep his way pure? How can anyone keep their lives pure? How can anyone live blamelessly? How can anyone go and live a life according to what he tells us is by living according to your word? Simply put. Talking about a mic drop, that's the end right there. We could go to lunch. Hey, all you people, I want you to live and be a pleasing, or be, be somebody that's um, lifting up the word of God. Be a better example of Jesus Christ to so live by his word. Close the book and walk away. Psalmist knew it wasn't that easy. So for 2020, guess what we're going to be doing? We're going to be seeking his word. What do you mean seeking his word? I have a Bible. I have an electronic Bible. I have Max McLean read it to me if I have that version. Listen. You need to be seeking. Not seekers like you hear in a, in a derogatory term. I keep wandering lost. You're not seeking in that term. We are seeking what he would have for us individually in 2020. Same chapter, 119 verse 10. Said it right before I read verse 11. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. I want you to, and I, I'm not hitting anybody on this one. If, it, if you hit yourself, that's good. You realize I don't set out to convict you. I just preach what God tells me to, and then the conviction comes. Right, Robert? Amen. I seek you with all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. Listen, your righteousness is not based upon your pastor seeking out guidance from the Lord. I could be a terrible pastor, and you could still seek the Lord. I can be a very, very devout, righteous man. I'm not saying where I, I fall. This is not judged, Pastor Randy Day. I'm not going to tell you where I am on the spectrum. But I believe I follow God. Yeah. Seek his best. And I'm going to seek him all the time. Have I gotten there? No. I am still on my life journey. God years ago took the burden off of me. My burden is not you. My burden is me. To be the best me. That I can be by serving He. I seek you with all my heart. 
I want you in 2020 to give your heart to God. Well, Pastor, I'm saved. No, that's not what I'm saying. Well, he entered him. I don't. I understand that. I don't want you to tell me where he's dwelling. I don't want you to tell me when he came over your life. I don't want you to tell me always about that one moment. I want you to seek him constantly with all of your heart. Filling it up so that you do not stray from your commands. Uh-oh, commandments, obedience. I've got to do this. So if I want to fill his heart and be more pleasing to him, what do I have to do? I have to obey what he tells us to do. Well, what does he tell you to do? Cooper, do you know everything God's told you to do? No. You don't, bro. I'm taking, you off. I'm taking the burden off of you. Pastor Randy has memorized the entire Bible and knows every command. No. You know, sometimes I get commands that are just straight from God. Do this. Where's that in the book? Hey, you just didn't do this. I seek you with my all my heart. Do not let me stray from your commands. This should be our goal for 2020. Not to stray away, but seek him in all things. As you go along seeking, guess what you're also supposed to be doing for this year? Learning. Can't teach an old dog new tricks. Oh, yeah, you can. Well, I've sat through church way longer than you've been alive. Sorry. Oh, I, I listened to David Jeremiah. Sorry. I listened to so-and-so. Sorry. I read four devotionals a week. Sorry. You still have things you can learn. <coughs> if I take the median age of this group, guess what? It's older. You're an older group. And you still have room to learn. What amazes me and my wife, Kimberly, about you guys, Pastor Kimberly, is that some of you are older, but you're still babes in the understanding of who Jesus Christ is supposed to be in your life. Then you get a little Aiden that walks in, and you're like, ooh, that kid kind of got it covered there. But Connor's singing out. He understands he's redeemed. We're going to be learning for 2020. You don't even have to turn your Bibles if you got to 119, because it tells us in verse 12, praise be to you, O Lord, Teach me your decrees. You realize in this whole chapter of Psalm 119, it's like, oh, I want to learn. i got to obey. Well, teach me. Guess what? Don't ask me. Don't rely on me to teach you. Go straight to the Father and ask Him to teach you His decrees. One of the things I love about my Tuesday night men's group, it's not me talking all the time. We don't always see things the exact same way. Some of us have read the scripture over and over and we'll see a, something will be said and we're like, we never saw it that way. I never understood it that way. Praise be to you, O Lord. You're the greatest teacher and I want you to teach me your decrees. Not a pastor, not a Bible study, but I want God, the Father, to teach me his decrees. I can remember some of the greatest moments in my life were those dad moments when dad taught you things. Remember when dad took you out? Oh, I'm going to teach you how to do this. I'm going to teach you to throw a baseball. I'm going to teach you to throw a football. I'm going to teach you to do work. I'm going to teach you to, to mow the yard, to rake. Dad teaches a lot of things. Fathers are supposed to be teachers to their children. Why would we not expect our father in heaven to teach us? Why do all of a sudden we look for somebody else? Teachers in school are there to teach. For some reason, we've got a mix-up and we think that teachers are there to discipline. Wrong. Teachers are there to guide them morally. Wrong. Although we should. That should be a side note. Teachers are there to follow the name of their occupation, and that's to teach. We're calling a profession because we're supposed to be professional teachers. God is the ultimate teacher. It's His decrees. Why not learn them straight from God? Here's one step I'm going to tell you that's going to help you in 2020 as we go through this process of seeking and learning is you're going to be meditating. Every one of you know that you just went home in your mind. You did. As soon as I say the word meditating, everybody goes, oh, we're not meditating like that. If that helps you to say, oh, do what you got to do. But the Word of God tells us in the same chapter, in verse 15, I meditate on your precepts and I consider your ways. 
I love that verse. That's the NIV version. There's not another version there, Eric. But if you have your Bibles and you have another version, does anybody have another translation of that? Because consider is too weak a word. Yes, ma'am. It says, fix my eyes on your way. Fix my eyes on your way. I think the King James Version says to <laughs> honor or to uphold. Respect. Respect. I will meditate on my precepts and regard my ways. And regard your ways. Listen, consider now seems like, eh, let okay. me consider that. No. The truth of it is the word says on your precepts in regard to honor, to follow, to be obedient. To listen to your ways. I'm going to meditate on your ways. We have a 24-hour news station. Several of them. A couple of them are completely wrong, but there are several of them. We have 24-hour TV. I like Westerns. You can watch Westerns all day long. I like sci-fi. You can watch sci-fi all day long. You find yourself meditating. Listen, I am not ashamed to say I meditate on sports. I can have a sports one all day long. Kimberly will ask me in the middle of a game who's winning. I don't know. It's on. Why? Because that's what she should do. Just have sports on. <laughs> if, 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 if that's my meditation, if that's where my focus is, why can we not meditate on him? Why do we not in 20, and I don't know, it's just getting, why do we not in 2020 have a TV channel that just rolls scripture 24-7? That sounds stupid, Pastor. Who's going to watch that? I don't need to read the Bible 2020. We have gotten so far from understanding God that we say, I don't need to read all the time. I don't need to be in prayer. I don't need that because He's always with me. That's true. But just because He's there doesn't mean you shouldn't meditate on Him and follow His precepts for your life. I promise you, anybody in here have police or law enforcement in their families. When you hang out with them, doesn't mean you get to break the law. You hear what I'm saying? My brother has a badge. Just because I'm with him, who is under the authority of the sheriff and has a badge, a legal kind of power... I don't get to abuse that power. Why? Because we're walking with the Lord, serving Him, knowing His authority. Why do we then think it's okay to break His command? It's not okay. Well, He gives me grace. Oh, Lordy. It's not grace to do what you want. It's grace to cover His authority over your life. When you don't do as he decrees or asks. That's when grace comes in. So why for 2020 can we not find a verse? Can we not find direction? Can we not seek, learn, and meditate in a, on his life and on who he wants to be in our lives? Focus for 2020. Simply put, same chapter, different verse. Number 16 says, I delight in your decrees. I will not neglect your word. How many of you delight in rules? Hey, I do. I am glad we have rules. Rules guide us. I teach science. And there are certain things that are rules in science. <laughs> and when I don't follow those rules, people can get hurt. I try to teach my students this. You know, there are some things that are acceptable, but there are rules. And if we violate those rules, bad things will happen. They're like, what, Mr. Humphrey? I think about measuring. Measuring is a standard. We use the metric system. It's all I teach in school. Ugh, it's way easier than our standard. I'll teach you one day. But the metric system... And it's very important to understand those measurements and those standards. They say, why? I said, because if you just mess up a little bit, could you imagine your doctor who decides that he's going to give you medicine that will heal you, but he just didn't really follow the standard of the measurement and says, I'll just give him a couple liters of that. 
No, I need an M in front of that, called a milliliter, which my body can take. But that liter is too much for me because a standard is something we're supposed to follow, and it guides us and helps us. Let me tell you, I delight in his decrees. In the decrees of our Lord and Savior and our Father in heaven is absolute freedom. You can be free in his decree. What does that mean, Pastor Randy? Free to do what I want? No. Free to live a life without condemnation. Free to live an eternal life. One day I will die. Yes. I don't know that day. I hope it's not soon. I'm okay if it is soon because I know where I'm going. I know some of you will be sad. Very sad. But I also know that God will do what he does best. And call me on to be with him for all eternity. I delight in your decrees. For 2020, can you step aside from this horrible world that we hear about and delight in his decrees and not neglect his word? I am not going to stand before you and give you a Bible reading plan. I'm not doing that. It gets you off the hook. I am not going to stand before you and give you a little pamphlet that tells you all the scripture you should read. I'm not going to do that. It takes you off the hook. I believe that everyone in this room is mature enough to say to themselves, I'm not going to neglect his word, and I'm going to be in his word for 2020. When you don't understand it, keep reading. I love when people come to me and say, what does this mean? You know what it does? It challenges me to get into the word and say, I need to know what that means too. That's iron sharpening iron. Two pieces of metal coming against each other are dull as can be, but when they hit each other and start to rub against each other and share with one another their attributes, they get sharper. 2020, you need to be in his word. And in his word, you will find a life verse. What does that mean, Pastor? That's a verse that will speak boldly to the direction of your life. There are a lot of them out there. You can Google it, and they give you a list of possible life verses. I don't want you Googling it. I want you seeking, learning, and meditating on his word so much that it speaks volumes to you. How do we learn songs? Repetitive. Repetitive. How do we learn things in school? Repetitive nature. Write it, teach it, listen to it. Input, output, input, output, over and over and over. This is going to be a year where we focus on his word. I spoke to a pastor friend of mine the other day. And I thought it was very interesting what he said. He said, their church is going to focus inward. Well, that sounds exclusionary. Or like you're excluding somebody. It sounds like you're trying to isolate. No. We are God's family. We are his children. I was put on this earth just as much for you as I was for the lost. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten Son, and it's not to condemn the world, but to save the world. My purpose as your pastor is to get you to follow his decrees, to grow in his understanding of who he wants to be in your life. Not in my life. I can tell you cool stories all day. We can have testimonies for the next year, every Sunday. And listen, oh, I forgot to throw this in there. I want you to share your life first with the family. When you come to that understanding and you have your life first, I want you to share it with the family, not just written. But I'm going to do the teacher thing and have you present it. 2020, my life first. 2020, what's going to be the life first of this church? We'll find it together. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for speaking boldly, clearly, and truthfully. <laughs> Lord, I just ask you now, as we take this journey together this year, we strengthen one another. We come along with one another, alongside each other, so that we can share what you'd have us to share. Say what you'd have us to say. Lord God, I just ask you so much. May your words speak to us clearly. In Jesus' name, amen. Altars are always open. Eric, if you'll get the lights a little bit.